in this session we will discuss about microscopy and how to identify cells and their structures in light microscopy now i would like to revise the parts of the light microscope this is a picture of a compound light microscope which we discussed about during the microscopy lecture now revise the parts of the microscope here you have the eyepiece this is a binocular microscope so there are two eyepieces where you place your eye on these both eyes and focus and that is uh, attached to this area where you have the base and the stand of the microscope underneath the eyepiece lenses you get what is called the nose piece this is the nose piece and this is the area which you can move to that is attached the objective lenses in this particular microscope there are four objective lenses and you can see the bands of you can see the bands of color that tell you the size so this is the lowest magnification four this is yellow band which is magnification 10 this is the blue band which is the magnification 40 and this is the oil immersion or 60 which is white band then below that you see the stage with the slide clips and the control control knob Below that, the condenser and the diaphragm system is here. Condenser focuses the light onto this area. The diaphragm changes the amount of light that goes through. The diaphragm is like a pupil, like the pupil of the eye. It adjusts the amount of light that passes through. The condenser directs the light towards this area where you will be placing your slide. Then directly below that, you have the internal light source. Okay, and there will be a knob for you to increase and decrease the amount of light that gets into the microscope. Then you have the fine and coarse focus knobs. This is the fine one, this is the coarse one, and the coarse one moves the stage a lot, fine one moves it very little. So when you are focusing on low power, either 4 or 10, you can use the coarse focus. But when you are using high power, like the 10 or the 60 or 100, you have to lose, use the fine focus. Now I have uploaded a video on a YouTube video on how to uh, use a microscope. So go through that carefully and then you will understand how to do it. Once you come to the university, you can practice on the microscopes that we give. Also, I have uploaded a Word document called the Microscopy Practical Handout. Go through that. All necessary details and the objectives of the practical and the lecture are given in that handout. Now we move on to the cell part of this practical. As I told you earlier, all cells, all epithelial cells have three shapes squamous cuboidal and columnar in the squamous one you have small amounts of cytoplasm and they look like a squam when they are cut perpendicular to the basement membrane the red line the nucleus is flattened out and parallel to the basement membrane cuboidal cells are shaped like a box or a cube and has a central round nucleus. Columnar cells are like a cylinder, cylinder or a, uh, uh, or a elongated box, which has a ovoid nucleus placed with its long axis placed perpendicular to the basement membrane. So these are the three types of cells, squamous, cuboidal and columnar, that you see in epithelia. Now you see three slides 
three focus slides that you will be using when you come for the practical. The first one, which shows you a squamous cell is from the lung tissue. So lung tissue is made out of alveoli. Alveoli are lined by a single layer of squamous cell and they have a little bit of connective tissue surrounding it. It is the thinnest epithelium as you can see very clearly, the nuclei flattened out and the cytoplasm. So this is built for exchange because it's so thin, things can diffuse through this epithelium. So when you come for your practical, you should be able to identify the lung tissue and identify the squamous cell in a lung tissue slide. You should also be able to draw what you see on your histology practical books. Next slide shows you cuboidal cells. This is a section from the thyroid gland. The pink, light pink areas are the colloid, which is the amorphous proteinaceous material. And surrounding it, you have cuboidal cells and you can see the nice rounded nuclei here, several nuclei, and you can see the cytoplasm around this. Here also, you should pay attention to identifying the cell. So this is the nucleus. This is the cytoplasm surrounding the nucleus. So the cell margin would be something like that. Okay, so whatever slide you look at, you have to identify correctly the nucleus and the cytoplasm, and you can imagine where the cell margin is. Next slide shows you columnar cells from the intestine. You can see elongated nuclei, so the cell shape you can imagine. Surrounding this, there is a pink cytoplasm, elongated nuclei, which are long axis of which is perpendicular to the basement membrane, which will be somewhere there. Below the basement membrane, you see the connective tissues. And you can see a slight hazy appearance on top. That is the brush border or the microvilli. Here you can see a, a goblet cell, right? So in this particular practical, you need to be able to identify the columnar cell properly and identify the elongated nucleus of the columnar cell. Now this slide shows you a low power view, 10 to the power 10 of a salivary gland. Now observe the different cell types and the different structures in low power. The view, the the view of a low power, you have a large area. You can visualize a large area at a slightly lower magnification. Now this is a blood vessel. You can see the squamous cells lining the blood vessel and the blood, red blood cells inside. These are small capillaries. Again, you can see the squamous cells and the red blood cells inside. These are the acini of the salivary gland. This is a tiny lumen of the acinus, and these purple stained cells are the cells that line this lumen, line the acinus. It is a round structure and it is stained very darkly in purple. You can vaguely make out the nuclei which are central. Then you see the ducts which are stained nicely in pink in your scene, and in the middle you can see clearly the nuclei which are stained in purple. You can see several ducts. So that is the lumen in the middle. This is the cytoplasm in pink and these are the nuclei. So you can imagine where your cell margins are. Okay, and then between those, you can see small lines like things stained again in your scene in pink. These are collagen fibers. Now we move on to this next slide, which is a directly a high power view of the same slide. Now you see that you cannot see a lot of the structures you saw previously, while a small area in the middle has been enlarged. 
okay so when you go and look at your uh, microscopy video you they will tell you that once you have focused a slide you have to bring whatever you are looking at to the center before moving to high power if you don't do that that structure you are visualizing will be lost because in high power the exact center of the slide is enlarged so you will see the structures in the center in more higher magnification so you here you see a duct a blood vessel and the acini and the collagen fibers at a higher magnification magnification 10 to the power 40 so this is a high power view of the sal same salivary gland now here is the duct you can see the cytoplasm pinkly stained and nice rounded nuclei which are stained in purple that's the lumen these are the acini and now you can clearly see the central darkly stained nuclei and the cytoplasm which is pink however because of the granules right because of the proteinaceous granules which are inside the cytoplasm it is turned in purple right so compare these two this is very intensely pink because of the granules these cells look darkly stained these are the blood vessels squamous cells and the red blood cells inside these are the collagen fibers now in your practical you should be able to focus in low power draw what you see then move to high power and then again draw what you see understand that your visual field is now reduced when you come to high power these are rules and things that you need to know not just for this year but later also if you need to use microscopes right so when you are moving from low power to high power always remember do not use the coarse focus if you do you will break the slide as well as the lens once you move to high power you can move the fine focus to bring the image into focus right clarity Now here you see a liver tissue, a slide in low power, 10 to the power 10. Mm -hmm. You can see the hepatocytes. These are the hepatocytes, plates of hepatocytes. And they're all colored or stained in pink, you seen because they are cytoplasm. And you can see small nuclei, okay, stained in purple. And in between the cells, you see a special type of capillary called a sinusoid, which is lined by endothelial cells and which has blood inside. So between hepatocytes, you get sinusoids. And you can see red blood cells inside the sinusoids. So this is a low power view of the liver. Now you move to a high power view of the same slide, 10 to the power 40. Now you can very clearly see the nuclei. Can you see it? Okay, so this is the nucleus and inside you can see the chromatin as well as the nucleolus. So this is the pink area, it's the cytoplasm. So the cell margin would be somewhat like that. Central nucleus, cytoplasm surrounding it, nucleolus. Then the sinusoids are also clearly seen here and you can see the individual red blood cells. Now to talk about the different staining properties of cells. If you look at mucus cells, mucus cells stain very lightly in H&E. You can use special stains like Sudan 3 to stain mucus if you want. You can see the lightly stained mucus acini and the peripheral uh, purple stained nuclei. Then you can see the intensely pink stained duct cells with again nuclear stained in purple. Then the acina cells, which are darkly stained because of their protein granules. Then the blood vessels, which the red blood cells are intensely eosinophilic or stained in eosine. Okay, so purple stained nuclei, pink stained cytoplasm, darkly stained serous acina cells, 
blood vessels with red blood cells in the lumen, which are stained brightly pink, lightly stained mucous cells. So this is a low power view of a sal mixed salivary gland, showing you the different staining properties of the different cells. Now, as you saw, mucus doesn't stain properly with H&E, and there are many other things, collagen fibers, reticulin fibers, elastic fibers, they are all stain very lightly pink, so you can't see them properly. So if you want to see certain structures which are not stained properly in H&E, you use a special stain. Now here is another slide of the liver, right? So these are the hepatocytes stained in light brown, that is the central vein. So here the liver is stained specially to show you its reticulin framework. Reticulin is a fiber, a protein, protein fiber like collagen, type of collagen fiber, right? So it is the connective tissue framework of the liver. So here is the low power view and this is the high power view to tell you about special stains. Then this is a special stain of the wall of the aorta to show you elastin fibers. Elastin fibers in H&E will stain just pink. But here you see the wavy appearance of the elastic fibers in this particular preparation and it is colored black. Okay, the collagen fibers are stained in brown. Now moving on to membrane specializations, I told you there are uh, structures which you can see in light microscopy and structures which need electron microscopy. Cell junctions that, uh, are seen in electron microscopy, but cilia, the brush border and the stereocilia can be seen in light microscopy. So this is a slide of the inner nasal wall, which shows you pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium, and you can see nicely the cilia, okay? So here you see an uh, intestine, simple columnar with microvilli, okay? So this is the brush border, the hazy appearance you get because of the microvilli. Then here you see the stereocilia in the lumen, okay, of the vas, and this is pseudostratified columnar with stereocilia. 